So we have a hear from Davina? Go ahead. Help me with him. I brought you out here to talk to you. See how you are? How you feeling? You think I'm just gonna tell her what I'm thinking? Hell no. At the end of episode 5, Raquel still failed to get Kanan to tell her what he has been hiding from her, especially his dealing with Howard. A mother who always lies to her son is now expecting the son to tell her the truth. I think this is not only about Raquel, but it has also been a typical trait among most of the parents in the power universe. Ghost and Tasha always lying to Tariq and yet expected the truth from him. Monet lying to her kids, especially Zeke and so forth. So now let's look at how hard Raquel is trying to make Kanan open up to her with the truth. After she tailed him to Howard's place, she decided to take him to the woods and see if he would say something at all. On the way, she started by asking about Davina. So we ever hear from Davina? Cousin always told me she wound up in South Carolina. She wanted to use the love of his life to ease the conversation so that Kanan can feel free to disclose everything to her. She wants him to trust her with the truth, but clearly, Kanan is not falling for that. Turn the radio back on now. Now, the next card Raquel played was to ask Kanan to help her bury the body in the trunk of her car. Now, that body could have been taken care of by Marvin, but instead, Raquel wanted to use that body to make Kanan feel like she's been open to him in good, bad, and ugly. So she decided not to tell Kanan who they were burying with the sense that Kanan will ask her about it, then she can tell Kanan who that was, then within that moment, she can also ask Kanan something about Howard to see if he will lie to her or not. But Kanan doesn't seem to be asking his mother about the person they just buried. Again, Raquel's next move has failed. I can tell you what Raquel tried again. She intentionally gave Kanan the alcohol to drink so that he can feel tipsy. Now, we all know the saying that drunk people and babies always speak the truth. And if you remember how tipsy Ghost was before telling Tariq the truth about Breeze, Ghost would have lied to Tariq about that if he wasn't drinking. So yeah, Raquel's plan again didn't work out. Prior to this in episode 4, Raquel directed Kanan to Def Khan's brother. Your Def had the whole South Side a lot, man. He's definitely my father, right? The fuck you just asked me? Is he definitely your daddy? Who the fuck else is gonna be your daddy, huh? The agitation and the tone of Def Khan's brother only suggests that he's afraid of the truth about Def Khan. His reaction alone shows that he knew very well that Kanan is really not Def Khan's son. Now, why would Raquel point Kanan to him for confirmation about his paternity? Because Raquel knew he would remain loyal to his brother, especially about his sex life, even if he is no longer here. This alone should tell you that he cares so much about Def Khan's image and would like people to remember him for who he was and not his other side. So Raquel wouldn't have risked Kanan talking to his uncle if she's not confident that he will stick to the script about Def Khan. What's up, Power Fans on YouTube? It's your boy Nino and I'm back with another Power video. In this video, I'll be merging things from episode 4 and 5 where I'll be talking about what Kanan knows, unique robbing Raquel's product, and possible deaths in coming episode 6. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's get straight into business as usual. If you consider how edgy Def Khan's brother was when Kanan was trying to look for closure, you could sense that he was very particular about what Raquel could have possibly said. So he kept asking Kanan what Raquel said instead of what Kanan could find out. What Rock say Def said? She just told me stories about how smart he was. Right. I had mad respect on the street. Correct. Now, when Kanan said his mom said nothing but people are saying shit, he then tend to say that people will always say shit, especially about someone who is not there to defend himself. People just been saying shit. People always say shit, Kanan. Especially when a nigga ain't around no more to defend himself. This already to me gave him out that he knew that there was a dark side of Def Khan that some people are probably aware of. So now to play with Kanan's mind and confuse him totally, he started to compare him to Def Khan. He's saying all this to Kanan for him to know that he is the reflection of Def Khan. Now, if you look at Raquel's expression after this statement. You wanted to talk to your father's brother, you did. Now, this alone shows that Raquel is very sure that Def Khan's brother will never expose Def Khan under no circumstances. Now, this is the first confusion Kanan is facing. 
The second major confusion for Canaan is why then Raquel wanted him to kill Howard so badly if he is really not a threat as she claimed. Now, the third major confusion for Canaan is when he went to Howard's place. Whatever they might have discussed was behind closed doors. So there is something that Howard might have told Canaan that the writer is keeping from us for later use. It is for the same reason Canaan is telling Duke that he feels Howard might be right. What if he tell him the truth? <laughs> now, what are the key things Howard might have told Canaan? Two things. One is Howard might have told Canaan that he had a DNA test done on him secretly and that came out positive. The second is that Howard could possibly tell Canaan the secret about Defcon and the fact that he wasn't straight. Hence, he used his mother to cover that part of him so that people would still respect him. Now, you know Canaan can't just move to his mother with this information without mentioning his source. Now, if Canaan doesn't want his mother to think that he's in talks with Howard, then he would rather be mute on whatever information he got from Howard. That's why if you pay attention to the outro voiceover at the end of episode 5, it says, sometimes you have so much to say. You just don't say anything at all. You just have to shut up and keep your eyes open. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think Howard told Kanan already who Death Count really was? Because think about it, they made us see two confrontations, which is Death Count's brother. We heard what they talked about. We also heard what Marvin told Kanan after he left the prison, but yet they kept that of Howard away from us. Hence, this was done on purpose. It is not like what they would have talked about was insignificant. They just want us to know about that later in the show. So leave your thoughts in the comment section and let me know what you also think. Kanan is keeping a lot now in his mind and he's going to explore what he knows because at this point, he is very aware that his mother is lying to him. They tell her how you've been feeling. Oh, you think I'm just going to tell her what I'm thinking? Hell no. Now moving forward, this call Unique made here was in relation with what his former guy was transporting for Rack. Yep, gonna be on a bus. One of them short joints leaving from the south side. Check it out, man. Don't fuck with my mans, all right? You and me. I personally think this guy is playing both sides and I know he will catch a hot one soon just like Scrappy. If you remember when Unique left the store, he came to him outside and he said something that we the audience didn't hear. Now, you have to take these scenes very seriously because it is a way the writer uses to keep vital information from the audience in order to make some action meaningful to them along the way. He informed Unique about the job he was going to do at Jersey and that is why if you pay close attention to Unique's call before the detective came in, he was warning the person not to mess with his guy. Don't fuck with my man, Zai. You and me. And that is why nothing happened to him. He wasn't beaten, he wasn't roughed, and he just came out of the bus as planned. Then he quickly reported the incident to Marvin as if he was robbed. You gotta be fucking kidding me. The fucking bus too? Now Raquel would still think it was this Italian man and his crew who robbed her staffs again whilst it was Unique. Now why is Unique doing this? Unique is doing this because he knows that Raquel will not think he will rob her product after robbing her money. And I can tell you that Unique intentionally robbed the shop so that he can just divert Rack's attention from what his real plans are, which is robbing her staffs on the road rather. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's discuss this together. Now, major deaths. Crown has finally earned a bullet from Lou. Famous spilled the tea about Crown's affair with Jessica. Even though Lou behaved as if he already knew that they were screwing behind his back, I can tell you that Lulu reacted that way so that if Crown is dead, Famous would not suspect him as the killer. So Lulu had to pretend he didn't care about what they were doing. Meanwhile, he was hurt. That is why after Famous left, they established the pain in Lulu's face this way. And at this point, I can tell you that Crown is done for good. Let me know what you also think. Do you think it's time for Crown to go? Do you think he has overstepped on Lou? Let me know what you think in the comment section by leaving your thoughts, theories down below. If you like this video, do not forget to subscribe like, share, and most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.